Hello friends, Jeff here from Squadron. Welcome back to another segment of the build of the F-14A Tomcat. So let's get started. Okay guys, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about airbrushing the parts we cleaned up, the cockpit, the insides of the fuselage, part of the wheel well, and the inside of the wheel well, and the sidewalls. As in the previous chapter, I have everything lined up, everything cleaned up. I selected also some colors. It's a little bit tricky. They always give you federal standards on the instruction sheet. They give you a reference and that's just what it is. Use it as a reference, but in this case, I looked at some pictures and I matched some colors up. So I, I'm gonna use the Vallejo. I got the 7907 and 7991. One is the dark sea gray. I'm gonna put that down first as a base coat and then I'm gonna mist it or uh, airbrush over it just to get some some shading 7907 the pale gray blue i don't think there is a, a standard because airplanes went to upgrades they get scratched some are factory new some are overhauled and they get uh, spray painted again or airbrushed again so i'm just going to take the middle road and uh, go with these two also it's going to be weathered i'm going to start with these and we'll see what comes from it sometimes i have to add a little bit white to get more contrast but i want to at least start these two base colors another thing is I'm gonna thin it with this airbrush flow improver I use it <laughs> for everything I use it as a thinner I use it as a, an airbrush cleaner if you get more bang for the buck that's why I like to use the family model here you can also use airbrush cleaner or the airbrush thinner to me they all smell the same they feel the same so I think they are the same at least from the same family if you want a family bottle, uh, get more bang for the buck, you go with the big bottle. If you have a small one, that's fine. Even alcohol will work. Denatured alcohol you get at Home Depot. But this is convenient, so I'll go with one of these. As far as an airbrush, I just have my old Iwata. Any airbrush will work, as long as you're familiar with it. I'm sure you, you guys all have your own preference. I like the Iwata HPC Plus. Have it for a couple of years, works for me. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to center out a lot of small parts here, especially from the side walls. It's hard to hold them in an airbrush and you, know, you don't want to get make a mess or get your fingers dirty or sometimes when you, when you airbrush it, they fly out of your hand. So the best thing to do is take some masking tape. It doesn't have to be model tape. Just regular masking tape is fine. I always fold these corners together so they don't stick to my fingers. Just attach these tiny parts on there that way you have a clear area without any obstructions it stays in place we get a, a couple more again this is where they the bindi boxes or the mini containers come into to play it's always nice to go back and know that all your little parts that you previously cleaned up are clean we do the same thing with this one here you go most of the instrument panel especially the the face will be painted black afterwards i'm trying to at least get as much possible in one shot and again this is just the way i do it there are maybe you have a better way but it works for me here we have part of the instrument panel and some of the electronics or how do you call it cockpit black boxes they're all gonna be painted black, especially these two here. So I'm gonna have another little tape prepared just to airbrush black paint. As I explained in the previous video, you can either glue these in place, like they come like here on these sides, but then you have to paint around it. So I rather, if it comes separate, I rather like to paint them separate. Also eventually, when you add the detail on and you paint the detail, it's a little bit better to get to it instead of that they are already incorporated into a main piece. Got one more. Let's start with mixing the basic color, which in this case it says Federal Standard 36231 and it's Vallejo number 7991, dark sea gray. Let's get a little cup. These are also handy, like to have. I liberated those at uh, Wendy's. They're pretty sturdy. They also will hold enamel thinner, especially when you use acrylics, you're safe. And you use them one time, uh, mix it, and then you can throw them away. I'm not gonna use too much. I'm just gonna use a little bit. 
because it's only a small area. Now there is no set, as far as for me, there is no set mixture. I just uh, eyeball it. If the flow or the drop, when it comes up in the right way, then I'm good to go. Some guys like to work with a lot of thinner and they do multiple uh, coats. Other ones they just like to have uh, like one coat and make it a little thicker. For me, I just use it somewhere in between. As long as you get a decent flow out of it, you don't spray any dust, you should be in good shape. Before I airbrush the main components, I always start with the inside of the fuselage because when something goes wrong, at least you have, it's not a big deal to clean that up. And especially here where the side cones all are gonna cover. So I can at least have a little bit of a test and see how the paint comes out. Looks okay, so now I can let's go on and cover the whole area. Always make sure you go a little bit outside the area, just to make sure that you cover everything. Don't just stay on the line here. Go as far as you can, or you can either do the whole thing. But I just want to give a little bit of overspray, so I'm sure I got everything, everything covered. You don't have to really thick coat it. Just a little basic coat will do. The dark coat is always the platform to do the lighter on, so you can mist it a little afterwards, and then you create some shading. So it really doesn't have to cover as much as any other color. It's just a basic platform that you can use with the top colors. Again, no biggie. If you forgot a little bit in a corner somewhere, eventually it will all be okay once you put the top color on it. Let's see what we have left here. Okay, I got all the components that need to be gray. I got them prepared. So now I'm gonna get a lighter color, which is what I use is, and again, you don't have to use this particular color. This is what I selected, just as a reference. This is the uh, pale gray blue, the Federal Standard 364373, uh, and it's Vallejo number VJ7907. Clean cut. Again, just a couple drops. I decided to uh, take the small bottle here because it's easier to manipulate, but again, the, the three I mentioned early in the video are fine. Airbrush cleaner, airbrush flow improver or airbrush thinner, they all will work. Just a little bit easier to show on camera. Make sure I don't bump into anything with the big bottle. First we have to clean our, our airbrush. Not really a big deal, but we have to at least uh, blow the dark paint out. It's always good to have one of these closed. It doesn't make such a mess and you just have to put it in there. Open the nozzle up or the needle and just empty your airbrush. And you, you can also flush it by putting thinner in there and then you can flush the airbrush as a matter and clean it again. But in this case, it doesn't matter if there is a little bit of dark in there. So here we go again, we're gonna use the big the big uh, pieces first so we can see at least what the paint is doing and a little bit more and you can only already see the contrast that it's gonna give I don't know if, if it's very clear, but you can already see that we got some sort of a contrast. So that will help in uh, finishing or touching up the, the cockpit with all the colors, especially when you do the switches and the knobs and all that. Just to give the cockpit a little bit of used look, it's already a great idea to do a, at least 50% of the work with your airbrush. Then it only becomes easier once you get into the crevices with oil paint or whatever media you're using to create some use and that the cockpit is used and, and some wear and tear but this already will help a lot if you already pre-create 
uh, some of the shading. Again, in the cockpit itself, it's a pretty tight place. So once you put the seats in there, there's not much you can see anymore. It's more effective on the side panels, on the side walls, also uh, of course on the instrument panel itself. But on the cockpit top itself, it, uh, it, you don't really see much once everything is put in place or glued in place. Once this is done, once the lighter color is applied, you can actually see how well detailed these pieces are. It's only after the like a priming that the detail really, really pops up. That's about it as far uh, as the cockpit is concerned. I think the color came out really well. I'm going to use the lighter color of the cockpit, the light gray. I'm going to use that for as a base coat for the wheel well. The wheel wells are white, so in this case I'm already going to airbrush the top coat that I use on the cockpit. I'm going to use that as a base coat on the wheel well and then afterwards I'll mist white over it and so it gets the same effect. For white, I'm just going to go with the off-white VJ70 A20. Again, any white will do. Tamiya, testers, Humbrol, whatever you have available, just use it. I'm sure it will all be fine at the end. But I'm going to go with the Vallejo color, just because I had it handy. Just a couple of drops in there. Did the gun again. Just gonna do it very gently. Doesn't take much. And there you have it. Now the only thing I need to do is mix some black for the parts, like the boxes I mentioned before, the electronic boxes, the cockpit boxes, the black boxes. Also part of the canopy frame because this is this is also black. I forgot to clean this up, so first I have to remove the residue of the taps. I have a little cardboard container here that I had from some tool. I'm gonna stick this on top of it. See, and you get the perfect tool to hold it. I use this method. I mean, you can even glue it on top of a paint can. You can always, but I use all kind of stuff I find around the house that can help me for just a little bit. After I'm done, I just throw it away. But at least I, I have a perfect hold and I can maneuver it in many directions just to get my paint all across. And then once I'm done with it, I peel it off and then there it is, uh, throw it away. I didn't have, uh, I don't have black here with me, but I have, again, this is just something I had close but it will work just as fine it's the black primer because some of the control boxes like the black boxes in the cockpit they need to be painted black it's only a small amount also the frame of the canopy is no big deal so I'm just going to use this for this purpose black is black I say make sure you get the, the sides real well because eventually this is going to be on top of your of the fuselage on top of the cockpit this will be your cover, so you have to make sure that you don't forget the sides, because that will be visible. This is also a part that I would suggest in, in the instruction sheets, they tell you to glue the part immediately after you build the cockpit and all that, but I would wait until the very last moment when you airbrush the whole airplane, so then you don't have to cover that up, and then finally you have a really nice crisp and clean edge once you will glue that, uh, that piece in place. So I would wait to glue that on unless I come to an, some sort of a conflict down a couple of pages more down the instruction sheet. I think already in my mind it's best to glue that on at the very last moment. So at least you don't have to worry about taping it off. Okay, and then there are a couple more pieces that I need to do. For instance, this here. I'm gonna tape this off 
because this is part of the bulkhead but the top part needs to be painted black so I'm gonna have a piece of tape here and just And then we have the very last So I got all my major components for the cockpit airbrushed. Now just to be absolutely sure I have to let it dry at least for 24 hours and preferably more just to be able to do the weathering on it afterwards. But I'm always a little bit weary because once the acrylic is airbrushed on there I like to weather with oil paints and if it's dry enough you can easily go directly onto the paint if you'll be very very careful just to play it safe I like to clear coat everything with Vallejo polyurethane satin varnish now this product is very very good it's the best on the market as far as a clear coat they have it in satin they have it in flat and they also have it in gloss I'm only familiar with the satin varnish this will give you a nice smooth top coat or clear coat and if you wait about 24 hours or even a little bit more, you're pretty safe. You can do most anything on it and it won't come off. Also a good invested investment. I use it on airplanes, I use it on tanks, I use it basically on anything. Make sure everything is shaky. It's a little milky. The old varnish was, was more transparent. This is a little bit more milky, but it will all dry up clear and without any problems. This is the best out there in general you know, of all the varnishes in the world. The, this one is the better one. Okay, so let's put a little bit of tinder in there. The mixture, it's all about personal preference. Of course, it's the, the thicker you leave it, the better it will, will, will hold. But I'll, I just like to do a, a very light coat and then just be very careful once I apply the weathering. I just gonna be extra careful that I don't rub too much on over the same spot or try to do it right at the first time but I really like the uniformity of this uh, uh, clear coat so again we start with uh, the inside of the fuselage And there you have it. So we got everything primed, we got everything done, looks good. You get everything clear coated. Now we just have to let it sit there for at least 24 hours, if not more. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty more to do on the kit itself. We can continue with a further build. Let me clean this mess up and then we'll start with further assembly of the kit. Okay guys, that was it for now. Uh, visit us soon on our uh, website, that's Quadron TV, for the next chapter in the build. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to YouTube or Squadron TV itself. That way you'll get notifications when a new chapter is put up. So that was it for now. Jeffy here, signing off.